Pat Boone, a popular name no less popular than the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley in the 50s, is now 90 years old. Despite being successful in his career with more than 45 million records sold and holding the Billboard record in 2010, Pat Boone still somewhat has a negative outlook on life after many tragedies. However, no one will be able to do what Pat Boone did when he always persistently nurtured optimism, even in the saddest moments. If you don't know Pat Boone's difficult times, watch this video until the end to get a more realistic view. At the impressive age of 90, Pat Boone stands as a testament to enduring creativity and vitality, defying the conventional notions of retirement. While many individuals might choose to relax and enjoy their golden years, Boone continues to immerse himself in the world of music and cinema, displaying an unwavering passion for his craft. One of his most recent endeavors, The Mulligan, showcases his commitment to staying active in the entertainment industry. In this independent film, Pat Boone takes on the role of an aging golf professional, breathing life into a character that reflects his own journey through the years. The fact that The Mulligan has earned a theatrical release through Fathom events on April 18th and 19 speaks to the enduring appeal of Boone's talent and the continued demand for his work. Beyond his contributions to the world of entertainment, Pat Boone has also been vocal about the profound impact spirituality has had on his life. In a recent interview with the Christian Post, he candidly discussed how his faith played a pivotal role in saving his marriage and sustaining him throughout his life's journey. Boone's openness about his spiritual journey highlights the importance of faith as a source of strength and guidance even in the midst of a successful and busy career. Boone's enduring commitment to his craft is nothing short of remarkable. He shares that, even at this advanced age, his life revolves around movies, books, and songs. His dedication to creating art has not waned over the years, and he proudly reveals that he has recorded more than 2,300 songs throughout his illustrious career. This impressive number is a testament to his enduring passion for music and his unwavering dedication to his craft. Pat Boone's enduring love story with his wife, Shirley, spanned an impressive 65 years before her passing in 2019, marking a remarkable journey filled with both highs and lows. Their decades-long marriage was a testament to their commitment to each other, even as they faced challenges along the way. Reflecting on their relationship, Pat Boone candidly acknowledged that their journey had its share of ups and downs. Their love story began early, with the couple marrying at a young age, and they quickly started a family, raising four children together. Boone confessed that they might not have fully comprehended the toll that early parenthood could take on Shirley's body, especially given their rapid transition into family life while he pursued his college education. As their life unfolded, the couple eventually made the move to California, where Pat Boone's career soared, making him a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. It was during this time of immense success that Pat Boone encountered a surprising challenge in his relationship with Shirley. He revealed that despite his affectionate gestures, like putting his arm around her or wanting to give her a kiss on the cheek, Shirley would often rebuff his advances with a firm, no way. This unusual response left him bewildered and led to a sense of discomfort in their displays of affection. Pat Boone shared that, for reasons he couldn't quite explain, he would feel nauseous whenever they attempted any form of physical affection. This peculiar reaction added a layer of complexity to their relationship, highlighting the unique dynamics that can emerge in even the most enduring marriages. The challenges that Pat and Shirley Boone faced in their marriage took an unexpected turn when Pat encouraged his wife to see a doctor. Shirley had initially believed that she could overcome her health issues on her own, but her condition persisted, prompting her husband's concern. After seeking medical attention, it was discovered that Shirley had developed cysts on her ovaries, a health issue that had arisen after the birth of their four children. This revelation marked a critical turning point in their marriage and personal lives. Pat Boone revealed that during this trying period, he turned to his faith in God, 
for strength and guidance. He recognized the need for divine intervention and support as they confronted the challenges brought about by Shirley's health issues. It was during this difficult time that Pat and Shirley experienced a profound transformation in their spirituality. They shared a pivotal moment when they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, a spiritual experience that was not expected by the couple, who were already devoted Christians. Pat explained that, as devout believers, they had been taught that the supernatural experiences described in the Bible, such as speaking in tongues or receiving the Holy Spirit, were not necessarily relevant in modern times. However, their experience of receiving the Holy Spirit challenged their preconceptions and opened their hearts and minds to a new dimension of their faith. The couple saw this spiritual awakening as a divine gift, a supernatural intervention that not only helped Shirley overcome her health challenges, but also deepened their connection to their faith and each other. Pat Boone emphasized that their suffering during that period had a purpose, revealing the need for corrective action in Shirley's life and leading them to embrace the supernatural indwelling of the Holy Spirit through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. At the time, Pat and Shirley were among the most well-known members of this church, but their disagreement on the matter led them to temporarily disassociate themselves from the church community. This period of disconnection from their religious roots marked a challenging chapter in their spiritual lives. In The Mulligan, Pat Boone takes on the role of Old Pro Will Dunn, a character described as a spirit-filled mentor to Paul McAllister, portrayed by Eric Close. McAllister is depicted as a successful businessman whose personal life is unraveling, a character with whom many can empathize in the face of life's trials and tribulations. For Pat Boone, this role in the film serves as an opportunity to convey messages and beliefs that are close to his heart and may not always find expression in his day-to-day -day life. Pat Boone expressed the importance of this role in The Mulligan as a platform to communicate profound truths that he holds dear. He acknowledged that great success can sometimes be a double-edged sword, a sentiment that he had experienced firsthand throughout his remarkable career. The lure of success can lead individuals to become enamored with their achievements, mistakenly attributing their accomplishments solely to their talents or choices. Boone's portrayal of old pro Will Dunn allows him to explore the idea that success can blind individuals to the deeper spiritual aspects of life and the importance of humility. Boone's participation in the film becomes more than just an acting role. It becomes a means of conveying valuable life lessons and reflections on the pitfalls of unchecked success. Through his character in The Mulligan, Pat Boone emphasizes the significance of remaining grounded, staying connected to one's spirituality, and recognizing that personal achievements should not overshadow the greater spiritual truths that guide us. Pat Boone's reflections on success and happiness delve into the profound sense of discontent that some individuals experience despite their earthly accomplishments. He pointed out that he knows many people who have achieved great earthly success, accumulating wealth, power, and fame, yet find themselves deeply dissatisfied with their lives. This sentiment mirrors the character of Paul McAllister, played by Eric Close in The Mulligan, a character whose personal life unravels despite his outward success. Pat Boone's insights touch upon a universal theme. That material success alone does not guarantee happiness or fulfillment. He highlighted the inner turmoil that can plague those who have seemingly achieved it all as they grapple with existential questions about the meaning and purpose of their lives. The uncertainty and unease that can arise in the face of immense wealth and fame are challenges that many people face, and they serve as a reminder that true happiness often transcends worldly achievements. In the later stages of his life, Pat Boone has found a renewed sense of purpose and direction. He shared his intention to spend the rest of his days creating more inspirational content and continuing his legacy of generosity. 
recognizing that he no longer needs to accumulate more for himself, he is seizing opportunities to give back to the world in meaningful ways. His commitment to increasing his acts of giving aligns with his belief in the value of being a cheerful giver, a principle rooted in his faith. Boone's desire to contribute to causes, individuals, and issues that need assistance reflects a deep sense of empathy and a genuine desire to make a positive impact on the world. He emphasized the satisfaction that comes from being able to actively help those in need and promote causes he cares about. This approach to life showcases his commitment to a meaningful and purpose-driven existence, where his success and resources are channeled into acts of kindness and benevolence. Pat Boone's career in the world of music began in the vibrant city of Nashville, where he first honed his musical talents by performing in the iconic Centennial Park. This early exposure to music would prove to be the foundation for a career that would span decades and leave an indelible mark on the American music industry. In April 1953, Pat Boone took his first steps into the world of recording when he signed with Republic Records, not to be confused with the contemporary label of the same name. However, it was in 1955 that his career truly began to take off when he inked a deal with Dot Records. It was during this period that Boone's distinctive voice and style began to resonate with audiences across the nation. One of the pivotal moments in Pat Boone's early career came in 1955, when he recorded his version of Fats Domino's classic, Ain't That a Shame. This rendition became a hit, propelling Boone into the limelight and setting the stage for the trajectory of his musical journey. At this stage, Boone's career primarily centered on covering R&B, rhythm, and blues. Songs originally performed by black artists for a predominantly white American audience. Randy Wood, the owner of Dot Records, played a pivotal role in shaping Pat Boone's early career. Wood had previously released an R&B single titled Tra La La A by the Griffin Brothers in 1951, which, though different from the later Laverne Baker version, had not gained significant traction. Undeterred, Wood was eager to produce another version of the song after the original release failed to gain much attention. This decision led to the creation of the B-side of Boone's debut single, Two Hearts, Two Kisses, a song originally performed by The Charms. Interestingly, the Fontaine sisters, also signed to the same label, had previously covered The Charms' hit Hearts of Stone, further illustrating the interconnected nature of the music industry during that era. In 1956, Pat Boone achieved a remarkable milestone in his career with a number one single, I Almost Lost My Mind. This song was not only a cover, but also a revival of a song originally written by Ivory Joe Hunter seven years prior. Ivory Joe Hunter, an influential black star in the music industry, had initially recorded the song. Interestingly, before Pat Boone, Another iconic black artist, Nat King Cole, had also covered I Almost Lost My Mind. Boone's rendition of this song showcased his ability to reinterpret and popularize existing songs, making them accessible to a wider audience. Boone's popularity during this era was nothing short of remarkable. In 1957, an opinion poll conducted among high school students revealed that he was the two-to-one favorite over Elvis Presley among boys, and preferred almost three-to-one by girls. This level of adoration solidified his status as a beloved figure in the music industry, rivaling even the legendary Elvis Presley in terms of popularity among teenagers. During the late 1950s, Pat Boone was a regular presence on ABC TV's Ozark Jubilee, a television show hosted by his father-in-law. His appearances on the show further solidified his status as a household name and allowed him to showcase his musical talents to a national audience. It was during this period that Boone cultivated a safe, wholesome, and advertiser-friendly image, which endeared him to a broad spectrum of viewers and fans. One significant aspect of Pat Boone's career during this time was his endorsement contract with General Motors, GM. This endorsement, which began in the late 1950s and extended into the 1960s, was a testament to his appeal and influence in the entertainment industry. 
Boone became the face of GM's advertising campaigns, succeeding Dinah Shore in promoting their products. His association with the brand was underscored by the famous jingle he sang, See the USA in your Chevrolet? Drive your Chevrolet through the USA? America's the greatest land of all. This catchy tune became synonymous with the brand and further solidified Boone's status as a trusted and recognizable figure in American culture. The Pat Boone Chevy showroom was another significant project that emerged from his partnership with General Motors. This television show provided a platform for Boone to showcase his musical talents and featured various celebrity guests, contributing to his enduring popularity during that era. In 1978, Pat Boone found himself at the center of a significant legal controversy, marking a watershed moment in the regulation of product endorsements by celebrities. His involvement in a commercial for a skincare product called Acne Staten became the focus of intense scrutiny by the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, due to allegations of false claims and deceptive advertising. The commercial in question featured Pat Boone alongside his daughter, Debbie Boone. In the advertisement, they claimed that all four of Boone's daughters had experienced real improvements in their skin's clarity and had found acne statin to be highly effective in keeping their skin free of blemishes. The implication was that the product had played a significant role in achieving these results. However, the FTC initiated legal action against the manufacturer of Acne Statin, contending that the product's marketing and claims were misleading and lacked scientific substantiation. The crux of the issue was whether Acne Statin could genuinely deliver the promised results of clear and blemish-free skin. In response to the FTC's complaint and investigation, Pat Boone eventually signed a consent order, which carried significant implications. In this agreement, he not only pledged to cease appearing in any further advertisements for Acne Statin, but also committed to pay approximately 2.5% of any funds that the FTC or the courts might eventually order the manufacturer to refund to consumers who had purchased the product based on the endorsements. Boone's decision to sign the consent order represented a legal resolution to the controversy surrounding the product endorsement. His stance, as communicated through his lawyer, was that he genuinely believed in the efficacy of acne statin. As his daughters had reportedly used the product and experienced improvements in their skin. However, the key issue was whether the product's claims had been scientifically validated, a matter that was contested and ultimately the subject of legal proceedings. In 1956, Boone made a pivotal decision to sign with 20th Century Fox, the same studio that had launched Elvis Presley's film career. This choice marked the beginning of Boone's venture into the world of cinema. One of Boone's earliest film projects with 20th Century Fox was Burner Dean, a movie that Fox adapted from a play he had acquired. The film was crafted to showcase Boone's talents and capitalize on his popularity. Bernardine became a solid hit, earning $3.75 million in the United States, demonstrating the potential of the singer-turned-actor in the world of film. Another milestone in Boone's film career was April Love, 1957, a remake of Home in Indiana. Boone held this film dear, considering it one of his favorites. The movie featured elements that appealed to his sensibilities a musical component, engaging characters, dramatic moments, a compelling storyline, and a heartwarming conclusion. Boone's passion for films that left audiences feeling uplifted and inspired was evident in his choice of roles and projects. In 1958, Boone appeared in the musical comedy Mardi Gras, which marked the last film directed by Edmund Goulding. Despite being less popular than some of his previous works, Booney continued to explore a variety of film genres. His next venture, Journey to the Center of the Earth, 1959, a science fiction adventure, was a resounding success. Initially hesitant to take on the role, Boone was eventually persuaded by the opportunity to sing several songs and receive a share of the profits. The film's triumph brought him satisfaction and reinforced his decision to participate. 
following a brief hiatus from filmmaking, during which he studied acting with Sanford Meisner, Boone returned to the screen in All Hands on Deck, 1961, a military comedy that achieved moderate success. However, he encountered a box office disappointment with State Fair, 1962, a remake of the classic musical. In pursuit of diverse roles and new challenges, Boone transitioned to a dramatic part in The Main Attraction, 1962, distributed by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. This experience was marked by conflicts with the producers and a storyline that he found objectionable, highlighting his commitment to maintaining a certain image and set of values. Boone's partnership with 20th Century Fox included a contractual agreement to make three films at $200,000 each through his production company. The first of these films was The Yellow Canary, 1963, in which Boone portrayed an unsympathetic character. The studio, however, reduced the budget significantly, prompting Boone to contribute his own funds to help complete the project. His subsequent films included The Horror of It All, 1963, shot in England, and never put it in writing, 1964, a comedy filmed in Ireland. Boone's third film for Fox was Goodbye Charlie, 1964, where he played a supporting role alongside Debbie Reynolds and Tony Curtis. As the 1960s progressed, Boone's film career began to wane, reflecting changing trends in Hollywood where musicals were becoming less fashionable. He took on diverse roles, including a part in The Greatest Story Ever Told, 1965, and the lead in The Perils of Pauline, 1967, a pilot for a TV series that did not materialize as planned. One of Boone's final notable film roles was in The Cross and the Switchblade, 1970, which showcased his dedication to his Christian faith and his willingness to address socially relevant themes. In 1994, he took on a notable role when he played the title character in The Will Rogers Follies in Branson, Missouri. This marked one of his many contributions to the world of entertainment. One of the most intriguing chapters in Pat Boone's career came in 1997 when he decided to venture into a completely unexpected musical direction. He released an album titled In a Metal Mood, No More Mr. Nice Guy which was a collection of heavy metal covers. To promote the album, he made a daring appearance at the American Music Awards, clad in black leather attire, which was a stark departure from his previous image as a clean-cut, wholesome entertainer. This bold move led to a controversial moment in his career. As a consequence of his unexpected transformation, Boone faced backlash and was subsequently dismissed from Gospel America, a TV show on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. However, he didn't let this setback deter him. In an attempt to explain his unconventional choice of clothing, Boone appeared on TBN alongside the network's president, Paul Crouch, and his pastor, Jack Hayford. During this appearance, he assured his fans that the leather outfit was meant as a parody of himself. Fortunately, his explanation was well-received by many, and Trinity Broadcasting decided to reinstate him. Consequently, Gospel America was brought back, and Pat Boone continued his career in the gospel music scene. In recognition of his significant contributions to gospel music, the Nashville Gospel Music Association inducted Pat Boone into its Gospel Music Hall of Fame in 2003. This honor reflected his enduring impact on the genre. In September 2006, Boone released another intriguing album, We Are Family R&B Classics. This album featured his cover versions of 11 R&B hits, including the title track and classics such as Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, Soul Man, Get Down Tonight, and more. It showcased his versatility as an artist and his ability to cross musical boundaries. In 2010, there were plans to build the Pat Boone Family Theater at Broadway at the beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. However, this attraction was ultimately not constructed, reflecting the ups and downs that can come with such ventures. In 2011, Pat Boone took on a new role as a spokesperson for Security One Lending, a reverse mortgage company. 
This demonstrated his willingness to explore various opportunities in the financial sector. Additionally, since at least 2007, Boone has been associated with the Swiss America Trading Corporation, a company specializing in the brokerage of gold and silver coins. As a spokesperson, he played a role in promoting the company's message of warning about America's economic collapse, reflecting his interest in economic and financial matters. In 2023, at the age of 89, Pat Boone made a surprising return to the music scene. He became one of the guest vocalists on the album Born to be Wild by Anne Margaret. Together, they performed the song Teach Me Tonight on the album, demonstrating that his passion for music and his ability to captivate audiences had not waned over the years. This collaboration served as a testament to his enduring relevance in the entertainment world. What do you think about Pat Boone's life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.